Hi everybody, this is my first, um, this is going to be my first video journal for a green slug. Um, this is the first time that all of y'all have seen my face. Uh, except for those of you who are my friends or those of you who have received one of my cards on the streets. Um, <coughs> <coughs> excuse me. I'm going to be very honest about something. Um, right now in my life, I am going through a really hard time. I'm going through something that's extremely painful. And rather than wait for it to be over, and it's not really that important what it is. Um, but instead of waiting, for God to come through and then telling my story, I decided to just tell my story and praise God that he will come through. Today I went for a walk and when I came back I actually it wasn't actually it was uh, before I went for the walk I opened up the Bible and just randomly I opened it up to a random place. I wasn't looking for anything. I wasn't even expecting to read that passage. I was expecting to read a different passage altogether. And this is something that I may have read before, but not really taking notice of. And I wanted to share it. It's funny because it's just one of those times in life where what's said here is exactly what I was feeling. Like, I don't know how to describe it. It's it, it's amazing. It's you know, I just there's times where you're just sitting there and wondering if God is actually there, wondering if God is listening. Um, part of the rough thing that I've gone through is I'm having some troubles in some relationships with some people I'm very close with, uh, people that I love very much, um, including my best friend Aaron. Actually, it's pretty much just my best friend there, and it, it really hurts. Because God has promised me that this is my brother for life. And not just for life, but that we're going to be best friends for life, and God has also promised me that this is going to be my best friend for eternity. And there were some things that I was, there were some other things recently that, though, those things that I just mentioned, God spoke clearly. God's reaffirmed with me over and over and over again. And I'm um, right now I'm learning how to hear God clearly. You know, there's times where I hear God and I am one hundred percent certain it is God. One hundred and ten percent certain. And there's no doubt in my mind. But then and there's times where I know it's not God. Like, you know, obvious, Sam's first very obviously not good. Um, and then there's the gray area where I'm not really sure. And I just went through a lot of, in the past few days, there's just a lot of I'm not really sure. So I'm going to show you guys. And it was clear that, that I'm not really sure it didn't come to pass. And it really hurt. Because there's something that I really wanted to happen, and I have no idea. I wanted to know if it was from God or not. And I'm not sure if I want to know if it's from God as much as I. Maybe I just wanted it to happen. Period. I don't know. But anyway, let me get to scripture. This is in Jeremiah chapter 20, starting at verse 7. And I read this out of the King James this morning, but I'm going to read it out of the NASB because for the most part the NASB is more clear. And this is the Bible I usually prefer to read. Um, 
and this is but I thought this to be I thought this to be more clear for people. Jeremiah's complaint. Starting at Jeremiah chapter twenty verse seven. O oh Lord, you have deceived me and I was deceived. You have overcome me and prevailed. I have become a laughing stock all day long. Everyone mocks me. Let's be honest, guys. The Lord did not deceive Jeremiah. The Lord it says in scripture, the Lord cannot lie. And you know, let's be honest. For the skeptics out there who want and you know, for those of us who are struggling with our faith, you know, I'm not knocking on a skeptic, who want to say, Hey, the Bible is just a made up book and it's just written by fairy tales for people who want to make money or people who didn't understand how the world works, didn't understand science. Um You know, a lot of people might say, hey, there, the Lord deceived Jeremiah. It's right there in the Bible. No. What's being expressed here? I prayed about this, and there has to be some basic common sense. The Bible says that God cannot lie. Nobody's going to make up a book where God lies to his beloved prophet. If you're going to make up a religion, you're not going to make that up. Okay, so let's just throw that right out right now because it doesn't make any sense at all, period. What's being said here is Jeremiah is complaining to the Lord because Jeremiah feels like he was deceived. It's not that he was deceived, it's that that's how he felt. And people express their feelings in the Bible all the time. It, and the Bible is still the word of God. Every word of it. What's being said here is not that the Lord deceived Jeremiah, it's that Jeremiah felt deceived. And I have felt that way recently. I felt like I can't trust God. That's what I felt for a lot of my life. Just pretty much the way I felt my whole life. Is can I really trust God? I'm learning Matthew 6 right now, which is that God will take care of me. Matthew 6. Not to get too off on a bunny trail. It's if God will take care of um, the lilies of the valley, which in America, I guess the equivalent God is showing me is the dandelions. You know, people try to kill off the dandelions, and God takes care of them. What about the birds of the air? God takes care of them. I have never seen a starving bird. Yes, I, I live in America. We kill all the bugs with all our pesticides and everything. I mean, it doesn't make any sense. I've never seen a starving bird. And as you guys know, I've never seen a starving bird. I have a degree in biotechnology. I understand how natural selection is supposed to work. I understand how the way the world is supposed to work. And I am baffled that there's not starving birds out there that look like they're starving. And maybe I'm wrong. Maybe they are. Maybe I don't know what to look for. But it does look like God takes care of the birds. He takes care of the grass, takes care of the flowers. Which are here today, and tomorrow we're thrown into the fire. And let me start here. Jeremiah's complaint. O oh Lord, you have deceived me, and I was deceived. You have overcome me and prevailed me. I have become a laughing stock all day long. Everyone mocks me. Oh God, you've abandoned me, and everybody's out there mocking me and making fun of me, and everybody thinks I'm an idiot. And you know what? I've been getting a lot of that. I'm not gonna lie. My personal life, and no names, no names. You got the one. That's all you're getting. Um, not to be rude to anybody, but I don't feel like it's proper to share that on YouTube. For each time I speak, I cry aloud. I proclaim violence and destruction. Because for me, the word of the Lord has resulted in reproach and derision all day long. Let me read that again. For each time I speak, I cry aloud. I proclaim violence and destruction. Because for me, the word of the Lord has resulted in reproach and derision all day long. Now, I know Jeremiah from... It looks like from reading other parts of scripture here that he was saying some things that weren't exactly popular. 
just typical of the prophets. Um, so things that are improper, that weren't normal sometimes. Um, you know, Isaiah walked around naked for three years. You know, if one of us, if, you know, any pastor, any of our pastors, 21st century in America went streaking for even five minutes, we'd want to kick him out of the pulpit, even if he said the guy had told him to do it. Um, this guy was being persecuted. Jeremiah. And he's saying, For each time I speak, I cry aloud. I proclaim violence and destruction. Because for me, the word of the Lord has resulted in reproach and derision all day long. Okay, so apparently I looked at derision. It basically means he's being mocked. And this is in the NASB. I don't understand why they had to use archaic words like this. In a modern day translation. But basically he's being mocked. Because of what God has told him to say. And because people don't like it. Kind of reminds, yeah. Sometimes, there, a lot of times I think Christians get mocked because they don't say things the right way. They're saying the right thing, but not in the right way. But there's going to be times where God calls us to say something, and we're going to be mocked for it. And people are going to get angry for us. But if I say, I will not remember him, him being God, if I say I will not remember him or speak any more in his name, then in my heart it becomes like a burning fire, shut up in my bones, and I am weary of holding it in, and I cannot endure it. You know, I've had so many times in my life where I have been ready to say, screw it, I I won't go sin, I'll, I'll still, you know, I won't go have sex and party and look at porn and all and do drugs and all the other fun stuff that the world wants to do that's you know honestly it's not fun um, you know people are miserable afterwards I mean you see the look in their eyes they're miserable they're not fun you know and let's let's be honest drugs don't do it I I've been high from the dentist and I didn't care for it um, Porn is boring. It's, you know, if we're really honest about it, the only thing it hypes itself up and it seems exciting, but it's not. Here, I've had been to the point where, bringing it back around, I've been to the point where I've been ready to say, I am no longer going to follow God. I'm gonna, I'm gonna follow His word. I'm not gonna sin, but I'm not gonna go proclaim. God's word anymore. Um, God tells me a word to say to someone, I'm not going to say it. I'm not going to tell people about what's in the Bible. I'm just going to live my life. And but then it does become like a burning fire. It's almost like vomiting. I don't know, it's like, I can't hold it in, it just comes out. I don't know if you all have ever had that. For I have heard the whispering of many. Terror on every side. Denounce him. Yes, let us denounce him. All my trusted friends, watching for my fall, saying, Perhaps he will be deceived, so that we may prevail against him, and take our revenge on him. I've had people do that to me before. And it's how I'm how I'm feeling now in life. I have definitely had this happen before. I actually got um, I got kicked out of a Bible study once for mentioning that I had not done a particular sin in four months. And I was ashamed to even mention that I'd ever even done that sin at all. And I, I didn't know why I was being kicked out at first, but the pieces kind of came together later. Um, and within a month, that Bible study fell apart. My friend told me about it. And they would never tell me why they were kicking me out. 
him, so it, it became clear later on. Um, you know, I have the, the full story right on my website, greenslug.com. This slug is spelled with two G's. And it looks like we're starting to get to the good part of this chapter. But the Lord is with me like a dread champion. Okay, what this means is like a dread. I I looked up there again. They're using archaic terms, which doesn't seem appropriate in a modern day translation. Even the Old King James had a better translation than this. But I looked it up, and what it means is like an exalted champion, this great big guy. Um, a dread champion would be like like Hercules. That'd be a dread champion. Is the huge, t huge, wonderful, powerful champion by my side. The Lord is with me like a strong, powerful champion. Therefore, my persecutors will stumble and not prevail. They will be utterly ashamed because they have failed. With an everlasting, dis with an everlasting disgrace that will not be forgotten. I am looking forward to Satan's fall. I am looking forward to his destruction. I'm looking forward to all the demons being thrown into hell. Um, because there's a myth out there that, demon, that, that Satan rules hell, but that's not true. When Satan is thrown into the lake of fire in the future, he won't be ruling. Satan doesn't rule hell. God does. And C.S. Lewis put it well. C.S. Lewis had the philosophy that the gates of hell are locked from the inside. And he's right. Um, he's right. People are in hell because they choose to be. You know, God made every attempt to get them out. Nobody goes into hell blindfolded. But I'm looking forward to Satan being destroyed. I'm not looking forward to any people being destroyed. And when it's beloved friends and Christians from different groups out there. It's different. You don't want them to be destroyed. Yet, O Lord of hosts, you who test the righteous, who see the mind and the heart, let me see your vengeance on them, for to you I have set forth my cause. And this is where I feel differently than Jeremiah. Actually, when I walk around, I do want revenge. I want other people to feel the pain that I feel, the people who have inflicted pain on me. But then when I read this, and the idea of the Lord having vengeance for me, I say, God, I don't want it. I don't. I want people to turn around. I want them to repent. I want Repent means to turn around. Stop. I want them to stop causing destruction, I want them to realize that what they're doing is wrong. Just anybody who hurts me, I, want, I just want them to stop hurting me. I want them to turn around and go the other way. I've been reading a I wrote a book by Joyce Meyer called Do Yourself a Favor, Forgive. It's a wonderful book and I recommend it to anyone. And the next verse says, Sing to the Lord, praise the Lord. For he has delivered the soul of the needy one from the hand of evildoers. I praise God, because you know he's going to deliver me. No matter what I go through, he's going to deliver me. Cursed be the day when I was born. Let the day not be blessed when my mother bore me. You know what? I've had a lot of that. I wish I wasn't ever born. Maybe you know, God, I want to just drop down and die. His life just seems so painful. You know, it's I've had the feeling of God won't come through for me. God won't come through on his promises that he's made for me. 
it's not about it being it's somewhat it is, but it's not about it's not about being separated from my friends. It's about I feel pain for not being able to hear God. The clue is I want to. Cursed be the man who brought the news to my father, saying, A baby boy has been born to you, and made him very happy. You know what, I, I'm sorry, I got, I don't feel that way with Jeremiah right now. Um, I've had the, I wish I wasn't born lately, and, you know, I wish I was dead type thing. Um, I'm, I'm not going to commit suicide. Um, it's, it's just, I, I want to live. This, I want to live. I just, I'm not going to do that. Um, I, I think this is kind of strange, though. I mean, let me read this again. Cursed be the man who brought the news to my father, saying, "A baby boy has been born to you and made him very happy." You know what? I've, I've been a lot of, I've been in a lot of pain lately. But saying "f the doctor," <laughs> I mean, come on. This, this, this seems ridiculous. This seems, this seems silly. I mean. I'm probably gonna tell Jeremiah that someday when I get to when I come to enter into paradise. I'll probably say that to Jeremiah. Like, Jeremiah, you're being ridiculous. I mean, come on. I mean, this is still the inspired word of God. God inspired a man to tell his true feelings, but I mean, this you know, screw the day I was, screw the doctor. But, you know, I'm pardon my uh, frankness of words, but um, and there's other words. I, honestly, I think he's saying F the doctor. Um, I, even though it might not have been a doctor, I get the idea. But let that man be like the cities which the Lord overthrew without relenting. Let him hear an outcry in the morning and shout of alarm at, and a shout of alarm at noon. Okay, you know, I, I maybe I'm misunderstanding this. It almost sounds like, you know, and it doesn't matter at this point, but it almost sounds like he's saying, I wish the doctor were dead too, but I I don't I don't think that's it. I might be misunderstanding that because he did not kill. Oh, okay, I guess he is saying that because he did not kill me before birth, so that my mother would have been my grave and her womb that were pregnant. Okay, saying screw the doctor for not giving my mother an abortion. Um, yeah, I don't feel like that. Um, why did I ever come forth from the womb to look on trouble and sorrow? So that my days have been spent in shame. Alright, this guy's a prophet who got to write quite a bit of the Bible. You know, this guy's having an emotional time. And I guess. I think I like verse 13 the most. Sing to the Lord, and praise the Lord. For he has delivered the soul of the needy one from the hand of evildoers. Sing to the Lord, praise the Lord, for he has delivered the soul of the needy one from the hand of evildoers. Sing to the Lord, praise the Lord, for he has delivered the soul of the needy one from the hand of evildoers. We got it. Now, oh, praise God. No matter how bad things get, right now I'm in a fight with my best friend. Got a lot of other people. No details. Details aren't important. Um, now I'm not sure how much of the stuff that I'm reading here that I relate to is reality, and how much of it is my perceptions. Um, I'm just in a lot of pain. I'm just being very honest. I'm being very, very honest. God, like I said, God, you have promised me that Aaron is going to be your best friend for life and for eternity. I'm sticking by that. I'm sticking by it. God made that promise to me. And you know what? God comes through on his promises no matter what. Even in my pain. Just keep praying for me. Even when a good friend of mine told me uh, a 
woman who was old enough to my mother named Joanne. Um, I, don't, I don't call her Joanne, but it's her first name. She told me, Greg, even when you think nobody's praying for you, and she, she asked me one day, I walked into her office, and she said, Greg, have you been all right? And I, was like, I looked at her kind of confused. I hadn't seen her in the past three weeks. I, you know, I was like, why do you ask? She's like, I've been praying for you. And I was shocked. In those past few weeks, I had been going through a lot of pain. Immense amount of pain. I guess, you know what, life is painful. And she looked at me and she said, Greg, even when you think nobody is praying for you, someone, God has someone out there praying for you. At some point she told me the story of, there was a prophet in the Bible that said, Whoa, woe is me, God, woe is me, <laughs> prophet. I was like, because I'm the last of your prophets, and there's no one else. And God said, what are you talking about? I've got 900 other guys in the cave. I don't know the exact numbers, but. Just praise God. Even when things are hard, when times are rough, praise God. Praise God, praise God, praise God, praise God. You know what? If Jesus Christ suffered, we're not above our master. If he suffered, we can go through suffering too. Praise the Lord. And I just want to give a shout out to one of my friends on YouTube. Uh, big cuz. I don't remember the numbers after with that, but I mean, it goes by, you know, big cuz. I love her, she's awesome. Uh, so, praise God. Love y'all. Y'all have a good day. Bye bye.